everybody. Welcome back to the shed. I'm Troy. This is Dave. Howdy. And this is our 25th episode. Can you believe we've done 25 of these so far? Can't believe it. Since it is our 25th episode, we decided to take a shot because that's what we do around here. <laughs> yeah. We're Cheerio. drinking some uh, <laughs> Balcones Baby Blue made right here in Waco, Texas. And age. Good whiskey. Cheers. What do you think, man? Oh, man. Yeah, it's good. I think I'm getting used to it. <laughs> so before we get this party started, I want to remind everybody to grab yourself some of our cool merch. We got a cool beer stein you can get. Got cool t-shirts in case you want to wear our faces. We got uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Follow the link below and uh, get yourself some. So today the topic is the top three politically incorrect songs or songs that were written back in the day that probably wouldn't make the cut today for a lot of reasons i'm gonna go with queen fat bottom girls <laughs> oh, you gonna take me home tonight there's not a whole lot of subtlety <laughs> in that song and there's not a whole lot of like double entendre or anything like that it's just he just comes out and says it huh <laughs> they make the rock and roll world go round fat bottom girls you make the rock and world go round i don't really understand what freddie was trying to say in that song you know i don't either i never understood that song i like the song but fat bottom it's girls great great guitar you know what? great were... great you know rock and song but but they were ahead of their time because you know Fat bottom girls are sort of in style these days. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so maybe I got to retract it because uh, girls are getting butt injections and all kinds of stuff these days. It's like a Kardashian song. I don't know. The Kardashians make the rock and world go round. Yeah. yeah. But, I guess uh, I do, yeah. But it's, uh, <laughs> at the time, maybe it flew for maybe a few decades. It became uncool. Maybe it's back in style. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, understand what that's. I mean, how did? I mean, when he was writing lyrics, you know, he's uh, uh, fat bottom girl. He was writing fat bottom <laughs> girls that make the rock and roll go round. What's well, crazy? He was gay. He didn't like. Did he really like fat bottom girls that much? Yeah, I think Freddie was still uh, behind the curtain at that point. Yeah, but that's, that's probably true. Uh, yeah, it's uh, one of those songs that, um, by today's standards, it might be cool, but for a couple decades, it's probably uncool. Yeah. But anyways, well, what's your uh, number three? My number three is Dire Straits' "Money for Nothing." And the reason I chose this song is because uh, of some words that I'm not going to say here. I'll let yeah. the... Uh, here, this is why. I didn't realize this until, I don't know, a couple of years ago I was listening to this song on the radio. Because they still play the song on the radio all the time. They just have a different they version. They edit. They edited out yeah. that part of the song. The F and, word. And I... Yeah, the F word. A different F word. <laughs> but I didn't, I remember listening to it and not really realizing it at the time and going, wait, wait, there's a whole, there's a whole verse that's missing. And then I went on YouTube and I started, you know, searching the song and listening to it. And I was like, wow, that's like, and I would fast forward and I would rewind it and I'm like, I could have swore. Is it the Mandela effect? I mean, what the hell is going on? <laughs> exactly. well, there's, I know there's a verse that's missing in this song. Well, you know, to Mark Knopfler's defense, when he wrote that song, he was writing it about two bubbas, rednecks, whatever, yeah. that were moving microwave ovens and all that stuff. And they saw a TV. It was the it, point of view of, of, of their conversation and not necessarily what he was saying. Exactly. By today's standards, nothing gets under the radar <laughs> anymore. Yeah. But it was a song that was written in the you know, third person or whatever yeah. when he did yeah. that song. And he was talking about 
these, you know, guys that he saw in a Best Buy or wherever it yeah, was yeah. that were, uh, <laughs> you know, talking about. They were making know, fun of, I think, the 80s rock bands. There was a, you know, there was a screen on TV and it was showing MTV and, and he's talking about the little, he's a millionaire. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and they were they were yeah. envious of the status that these guys had gained. So I did some research to find out when that happened. Like when did they? Because I don't think Dire Straits they didn't say, oh, "Okay, hey, we need to." Even though back in the day, even in the '80s, a lot of times Martin Knopfler would he would change that word to Queenie. <laughs> He wouldn't actually say the, the, the F word. Really? Yeah, he would change the word. I, I don't know if he did this all the time. Yeah. So I did some research. I'm like, when did this change happen? So in January of 2011, the Canadian Broadcast Standards Council ruled that the unedited version of the song was unacceptable for airplay on private Canadian radio stations as it breached the Canadian Association of <laughs> Broadcasters Code of Ethics and their Equitable Portrayal Code. So, that was early woke then. <laughs> yeah, 2011 woke. So I don't know if uh, a snowball effect happened after that mm -hmm. and all of the radio stations started changing and ed editing out. And maybe they have a whole different version. Maybe the record company or whatever, uh, you know, edited that part out and sent it to the radio stations. And here's the new version you're going to play. Because I mm -hmm. haven't heard that version. Well, it was their biggest song, too. Yeah, I haven't heard that version on the... On the uh, the radio in forever and if you look on YouTube it's really hard to find the unedited version but I did find it and here it is so that's my number three what you can number? also find it in my house because I got <laughs> it on I got it on album and CD you know, I do you know I do too I have it on cassette and CD yeah. May, I might even have the album I don't even I don't even yeah know. it's one of those songs that I guess you could say it got canceled. I don't know if it ever really got canceled. I don't know. Well, if I it, mean, I mean that version. Somebody the canceled original it. version yeah, got canceled. Yeah. Anyway, that's my number three. What's your number two? My number two is the Rolling Stones' "Brown Sugar." Which is a great Rolling Stone song, and it survived for so long, but. When they really go back and they look at the lyrics, talking about slave ships, cotton fields, whipping women. Mick wrote some great lyrics for that song, but I mean, Jesus Christ, <laughs> when you look at it, brown sugar, how come you taste so good? Kind of writing a song that's going back in history and stuff like that, like slave shit time, and it doesn't really fly <laughs> yeah. today because it's such a, a you know controversial song. But uh, and you know the Stones, from what I understand, don't play that song anymore in really? concert. Yeah, because huh. of that. It's I still. Got, it seems like I still hear it on the radio every once in a while. It's in my head, I've heard it so many times. It, and it's, just... it's one of their biggest hits, you know, so it's gonna live on forever just yeah. because it's one of their biggest hits. But when you look at the, <laughs> look at the, <laughs> the lyrics of it, it really doesn't fly. And you know, brown sugar, how come you taste so good? He's talking about a black girl and having sex with her or whatever. <laughs> and I mean, you know, it's, it's, that part would probably be, be okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but nah. The, I guess I've never really paid that close attention to the the lyrics to that well, song. Well, you know, Mick didn't really enunciate like <laughs> a lot of people. like, you don't really know who's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Brown sugar, Rolling Stones. See ya. Well, my number two is Kiss. Christine 16. Christine 16. So there was a lot of songs back in the 70s and 80s that were, you know, 
I guess talking about underage girls. She's only seven. Ted Nugent had a probably a couple in there. <laughs> In, in in the real world too, not yeah. just in his song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he adopted sure. that gal so he could have sex with her. <laughs> that's insane. Some people oh don't God. know that story, but uh, yeah. look it up. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, so that song, Christine Sixteen, is you know when you're when you're a kid because I, I I didn't hear that I didn't know that song when it first came out because it was in, I was a kid, but you know I got into Kiss in the '80s. And when I was a teenager, and I remember hearing that song, and, but when you're a teenager and you hear that song, you don't really think much of it. But when you get <laughs> older, you start realizing that Gene Simmons was like, I don't know how old he was when he wrote that song, 25 to 30, <laughs> something in there. And there's that whole sort of talking part in the middle of the song. But when I saw you coming out of school that day, I've got to have you. That's creepy, man. Back in the 70s, a lot of these guys, rock stars, we're having their way with these girls, yeah. you know. Jimmy Page did, yeah, and uh, didn't it wasn't really a deal because these girls were groupies, but uh, they threw themselves at these rock stars. You know, watch the movie Almost Famous, and they kind of talk about that whole thing. Groupies sleep with rock stars because they want to be near someone famous. We're here because of the music. We are band aids. She used to run a school for band aids. We don't have intercourse with these guys. We support the music. A lot of these girls were underage. And, you know, these rock stars just kind of had their way with them. And it was almost accepted back then. By today's standards, no way. I mean, yeah. it would be like court. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of these girls were willingly throwing themselves at these rockers. But, yeah, it doesn't make it really Doesn't good. make it okay. Doesn't make it okay. Yeah. That's my number two. So what's your, what's your number one, Dave? Jimi Hendrix, Hey Joe. Hey Joe. Wow, Hey Joe, really? What's I, uh, that? What's hey that about? Hey Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? Uh, I'm going down and shoot my old lady. I'm going down and shoot my old lady. It's like a movie and a song. Yeah, but the way the whole song plays out, it's basically Joe is pissed off that his woman is che cheating, cheating on, on him. him. Yeah. So he's going down to shoot his old lady because he's he caught her messing around with another man. You know, I caught her messing around with another man. Later in the song, he kills her. <laughs> oh my god. And then yeah. you know. Going down to Mexico, you know, he basically offed his own lady, killed her, and then he's gonna go down to Mexico to get away from, you know, retribution. I'm going way down to way down to Mexico with. But it's not a really good song. There's no <laughs> upside to that song. <laughs> Sounds like a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a shitty scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the guy that went to Mexico, he was a, he was doing well, okay. Well, that was the guy that <laughs> killed his old lady. But anyway, I guess it's just one of those songs that uh, wouldn't fly. So my number one is Guns N' Roses, One in a Million. You're one in a million, babe. They are a shooting star. Guns N' Roses put out an album called Lies about a year after Appetite for Destruction came out, and it was a it was an album that had like four cover songs, then it had four acoustic uh, original songs that they did. It had like Patience. It is just a little patience. Yeah, I remember that. It was, yeah. a, it was like an EP or yeah. whatever. It was yeah. kind of an EP. It had eight, eight yeah. songs. Uh, Axl Rose got a lot of got a lot of crap for this song because it has uh I mean here listen police and niggas that's right get out of my way they they, they got a lot of crap for that song yeah and it's really a miracle that they kept their career going and then put out use your illusions one and two and you know yeah. had all those great songs on that because that song was very it was a very racist song at the time. Immigrants and faggots, they make no 
sense to me. I mean, and that song could never come out today. <laughs> yeah. At all. Yeah, it's uh Do you have you ever heard that song before? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I had. I think there was a time where we were transitioning into more, you know, politically correct stuff, but Guns N' Roses and especially Axel could give a flying. Yeah, he, you know. True. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't care. He didn't, he didn't care. care. Yeah, he and, was going to say uh, what he wanted to say. And, you know, he's not the first one to do that, and he's not the last one to do that. I mean, God knows there's been tons of rappers that get away with stuff that he couldn't get away with. Yeah. But, yeah, that wasn't cool. Yeah, I remember hearing the song at the time and going, whoa, is he really saying, is he really saying this? Make talk so many goddamn ways, it's all Greek to me. Anyway, so that's my number one. What are your top three politically incorrect songs of all time? Leave a comment below. Let us know. Also, make sure to uh, click on the link and get you some cool merch. We get got, some merch, man. We got some, some cool, cool merch. We don't. We do not have koozies though. <laughs> not here, yet. Here, show them the koozie. <laughs> if you want a koozie, these are OG koozies yeah. from back in. Uh, Eight years ago. <laughs> Seven years ago. So if you want a koozie, you have, actually have to come to the shed to get a koozie. We have a few more back here. But anyway, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think uh, your top three uh, politically incorrect songs are. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and all that good stuff. And we will see you next time. Cheers. See ya.